Hello everybody and welcome to the 7th chapter in the Java E7 tutorial. Today we'll be talking about JSF and why it makes websites easier to read and write. So like I said, JSF makes websites easier to read and write. And they also have a server-side component framework for building web websites and web applications. Now let's take a look at what JSF brings to the table. JSF has an API and tag libraries for managing components like validation, data conversion, etc. and adding more components respectively. What that means is that you no longer have to deal with validating or converting data on your own. JSF will take care of that for you and will add many more components which we'll see later. Now let's take a look at a few benefits. What separates JSF from the rest is that, well, it separates presentational code and behavioral code from each other. Presentational code is the code that uh, makes what you see and interact with, while behavioral code is the code that guides what the website or application is doing. Before you would code with HTML, servlets, and Java beans. With the JSF, all you have to code with is XHTML and manage beans. This means that you have no servlets that you have to deal with. JSF uses servlets in the background so you don't have to touch them ever again. The preferred presentation technology, although, are facelets for building Java server faces technology-based web pages. Now let's look at a few more benefits of JSF and their implementers. Now JSF has a rich architecture, which means that you can manage components and validate user input. Code can also be reused, and the use of annotations are great for the Java developers to work with presentational stuff. The implementations range from prime faces to rich faces. And an example of JSF application was actually shown in Hello1 in previous chapter. Now let's take a look at the lifecycle of applications. For every application, you have your client and your server. They communicate with each other through these request response cycles. And this happens thousands of times per second. Now, how does the server com compute this request and send out this response? <clears throat> They do it by using the Java server faces standard request response lifecycle, which basically takes in your um, page and then applies any validations, any requests, any like events, and it sends back a response, which sends it back to your client. Now, before we get into how this JSF standard response request lifecycle works, let's point out what these response complete arrows are for. These tell you as a developer that you can opt out of the lifecycle anytime you want and send the request to be processed by another web service. And when redirecting to another web service, the developer can complete the response at any step as shown in the response complete arrows over here. All apps that use JSF go through a similar lifecycle of initiation and conclusion. Now let's dwell into this cycle a little bit further. The first thing that your um, lifecycle encounters is your restore view, which either has an initial request or a postback request. An initial request is a request for a new page, which means that your user has, this is the first time that your user has requested this page, whether he click a link or like he type in something. Uh, this is the first time that your user has gone to this link. So this initial request will have a blank page and the view is created empty. Now a postback request is basically when a user enters in information to the server and then the server has to compute it and send back a response. This is called a view created with info or a postback request. Now the next thing in line is apply request values. These are um, taking into account the request parameters that are first read and then set the components to the new values, which means that you take the data from the JSF page and then compute it, understanding what the user has put in or what the user has, um, for example, typed in. Next, there's the process validation which then examines the component attributes that specify the validation rules and compare them to the local data. 
Then there's the update model values, which updates the local data to fit the input components value attribute, which means that it creates new data. Then there's the invoke application. This handles application level events like submitting a form or sending a link. Finally, there's the render response step. This is when JSF builds the view and sends authority to another resource to take care of the rendering of the pages. The state of the response is then saved to be available in the restore view phase that we've seen before. Now let's take a look at something actually really incredible that will be going on in the next chapters, but we'll just briefly touch it over over here. This is called JSF Ajax framework, which can send a partial request, which modifies only part of the page, leaving the rest of the page as it was. This can greatly improve application performance as only what needs to be reloaded is reloaded. We'll go over Ajax again in detail in the later chapters, but for now, just understand that Ajax is used to partially like reload part of the page, improving performance and overall like increasing user um, satisfaction. And that's it. That's it for um, everything on JSF. Again, if you have any confusions, just leave them down in the comments below. Until then, I'll see you um, in the next video on the intro to facelets.